What's up everyone, Exotic here and today I'm going over my settings that I'm using for Seto Corsa and mainly for drifting. Now I'm gonna keep this video really short and simple and I'm gonna give brief explanations on each setting, what does it do and why I use it. And I will also give recommendations and advices. So Lucas, thank you very much for requesting the video and I'll explain now what my settings are doing. Now for the gain, the gain is just uh, maximum force output through the wheel that goes basically the, the force feedback of the wheel just to keep it simple the more you increase it the more the force feedback will be honestly going above 100 percent is pointless so just keep it either 100 or below 100. Uh, now the filter filter what does it do when you drive over curbs and bumps you have this rumbling and if your wheel is super violent when you drive over the comes or bumps, you would like to increase the filter. What does the filter will do? If you increase it, it will just smooth out the large shocks or the large, uh, the, the huge rumbling uh, that your wheel will make. If your wheel is smooth and it, it doesn't have these violent reactions, you should not increase it. It will be pointless. Um, you will keep it on lower percentage or on zero, some people. Up, again, up to personal preference. Uh, for most of the settings. Minimum force, what does it do? Minimum force is basically the minimum strength for every force feedback effect in the game. I'll just keep it simple as it is. It will just increase the minimum uh, forces of all the effects. Now going into the effects, the curb effect. Curb effect will just amplify the rumbling you get when you drive over a curb. That's it. This will just increase all the forces you get when you're driving over curbs and uh, so on. So basically, keep it on zero. My advice is just to keep it on zero or you can experiment with lower percentages if you want more information when you drive over curbs and more rumbling and so on. You could try slowly increase it, and, uh, but start from zero. This is my advice. Now, uh, for curb, just to explain really quick. When you drive over a curb, you should already feel a vibration just to explain this really quick to throw it now road effect road effect is basically the setting that you should uh, feel the small rumbles and bumps that will give you a sense for the road texture basically uh, the sense of the terrain that you're driving on and uh, as well they will be related to the road grip basically the roughness the grip uh, that you get uh, for example, let's say I'm drifting, I make a mistake, I go wider, my back, uh, my rear tires go uh, outside the road, outside the asphalt, they will go on the dirt, and I can, I could feel that the grip, that I'm, I could feel that I'm losing the, the grip that I have on the rear. Uh, I'll probably spun out, or uh, it will be more slippery. You could, you could sense this from the, from the information of the wheel. Now, going into the slip effect. So, the slip effect what does it do? It just adds rumble when the tires are slipping. So when you initiate uh, grip, uh, when you initiate drift, my bad, um, and so on. ABS effect. What what's ABS? Just a quick explanation. It's just the ABS is just the braking technology uh, that will increase the braking and uh, efficiency and the power. So increasing the ABS will just increase your braking and power efficiency. So that's it. For ABS and again if you're drifting you don't use ABS and traction control now uh, the miscellaneous I hope I pronounced this correctly now these settings I strongly advise against them uh, however again personal preference but they're not too much important so what does the understeer effect do? is makes the wheel extra light during understeer I don't recommend this the the soft lock and the harder walk will do there are two different methods for making the making your wheel lock to match the car lock that that said i'd strongly advise you to use that when you go to axis when you go to where where's your steering there's option called auto adjust scale to match car steering lock i'd advise to use this if you want uh instead of using these two so again they're pointless so that's my advice not to use them. Except again, you can experiment, you can play with them uh, and just adjust to your liking. And if you like them, use them. If you don't like, don't use them. Now, post-processing. Now, going over these settings here. 
Now, the center boost gain and the center boost range, what they do. Uh, they're basically, they're trying to, they're used to counter any dead zone in the center of the wheel. So, if you feel like there's some kind of a dead zone, something you don't feel in the middle, when, when your wheel is centered, use these settings. And uh, you're trying to fight off the, these dead zone with, with these ones. Now, again, if you want to dig deep, I'll leave an article. Now, uh, enable FFB post-processing uh, post just increases the linearity of the force feedback of the wheel, so makes it more accurate, as far as I understand it. And uh, for the gamma, as I'm using gamma, I'm not using the LUT file, and uh, I'm using gamma here. Well, what I advise is to, uh, what does the, the gamma do? Is gamma low gamma will increase the strength of most forces like uh, these ones here the curb the road uh, the slip effect or just the overall forces and uh, if you increase the gamma it will actually reduce the strength of the forces so the lower the gamma the more forces uh, the the more amplification you get on the, the effects and uh, the the higher the gamma the lower the strength of the forces becomes so it actually, you see, it's amplifying the forces. So it works with the forces as well. Now this is the post-processing, that, there's logic. So lower speed uh, FMP reduction, I strongly advise you to leave it uh, as default. And going on the last settings, which is the experimental uh, options. So I strongly advise against using these. Uh, however, now, if you feel that your wheel is super light, I will advise to use these. Um, I use these options when I was using my Logitech G29. Now, uh, onto what they do. Now, if you t if you use the gyroscopic effect, well, it will add uh, adds dampening effects that will become stronger with speed. However. Uh, it's why why I advise against it because it's pointless. Uh, if you're using Content Manager, uh, basically a set of cores, uh, you should definitely go use Content Manager. And if you use Content Manager, you'll probably jump into things like uh, Soul and Custom Shader Patch. Now, here's the here's the thing: Custom Shader Patch has a superior version of this effect, so you should not use the gyroscopic effect, honestly. Now, uh, speaking of that, uh, just to explain really quick what these two are doing. The damper gain will stiffen your wheel. It will make it stiffer when you're stopped. And for the minimum damper level, it will actually increase the stiffness of the wheel. The dampening will be active at all speeds, a any speed, not just when you're stopped. This will actually increase it at all speeds, the dampening. So I strongly advise against using the experimental options and the miscellaneous. And I hope this was really useful. This is what I use again. Everything is up to changing. Uh, it's up to your prefer personal preference. So thank you very much for watching the video and I hope you enjoy your day or night.